Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to jump into our conversation here with Edith and Jordan. And if you do have any questions, we're going to have some time for Q&A afterwards. Go to the Slido app, please, and uh, type your questions in there. So we'll, we'll give you some time to be able to, to ask us some live questions. So check, check that out. Um, let's get started. Jordan, thanks for coming. Um, I, wanna, I want us to learn a little bit more about Medley. Uh, you and mom started this together, uh, which has been... No longer known as mom, Edith, by the way. Edith, she Edith, she okay, me sorry. because we're very pro. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so tell us about Medley, what led you to build a company. We'd love to learn a little bit more about that, and we can find out how that leads us to leadership. Absolutely, and thank you, Alex, for guiding this conversation, and huge thank you to Future Proof for having us. We're really happy to be here. Um, I, uh, as Alex mentioned, I'm Jordan Taylor, CEO and co-founder of Medley. I uh, have been working on building Medley for the past almost four years uh, with my mother and co-founder Edith. And we really come to building Medley from two different vantage points. Not only uh, at different stages in our own careers, but um, with uh, different contexts with how we're approaching sort of where we are in our career and with, with Medley. Uh, Medley is a community for leadership development. Uh, our focus is group coaching, and so we match people into groups with people from various con con companies, countries, and industries. Uh, and our belief is that groups are incredibly powerful, and we create spaces to uh, connect and grow. In terms of our founding story, uh, I've always been someone who's been deeply um, uh, at my best when I'm with the company of others. So experiences like this one where I get to show up and, and meet a bunch of new people are very yeah. much up my alley. Uh, and found that in modern adulthood, it's really difficult to find your team. It's difficult to find your group and find your medley. Um, and in my early to late to mid-20s, found myself really needing space for me to figure out what I wanted out of work, out of life. Uh, and have only just begun to realize that that journey actually never ends, and it's sort of that continuation that, that keeps going. Edith spent 30 years in uh, financial services. She was on Wall Street. Uh, the last 10 years of her time at Goldman Sachs, she was actually running HR there. And so she has uh, you know, decades of experience creating environments where people can perform to their potential. And I had recently graduated from Harvard Business School with this nugget of there's something in teams and groups and coaching that we can work on together. And so we've pretty much been off to the races since. Yeah, that's fantastic. Edith, you have probably one of the most accomplished backgrounds I've ever seen. I was just telling Jordan, I'm like, this is like the most amazing resume. As, uh, as you mentioned, you spent so many years at Goldman. You served on a number of boards. You still serve on a couple of boards. If we could, uh, was it Amazon Pepsi and, and Pepsi Amazon as well? Yeah. Uh, so... What kind of, the, all those leadership skills that you've gotten, how did that help you with Medley and being a, a co-founder there? What, 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 did, what did that bring to the table? Well, you know, I have been pretty fortunate, actually, because I've had the opportunity to work with, learn from, interact with super interesting, talented people, both, you know, professionally and personally. And, and for me, that is actually what fuels my soul. Uh, you know, the fact that I was able to work at a, a large company that every year brought in thousands of new perspectives and talent in a financial services industry, which I think you can all relate to, is by definition cutting edge and forever changing. And so that kept me on my toes, that kept me learning. And earlier in my career to this day, and, I, and I'm sure it'll be true going forward, you know, as a leader and as a business person, those two things started to overlap. And my role, I felt, was to really create environments where people could really thrive and perform to their potential. Because after years and decades of conversations about how to get the best people and how to get more diversity and how to do this and how to do that, those were really tactical things that actually were like the end result. What really made extraordinary was how people interacted with each other. And that is what takes place in teams. And so the opportunity to go deeply into that in my next phase of my career has just been incredible. Everybody has medleys in their life. You're part of this medley. You're going to walk away with expanded 
uh, interactions that are now new medleys, and we're really fortunate to be in a position to create these intentional conversations that go with that. Jordan, can you share what you've learned as a leader yourself and as a first-time entrepreneur? Absolutely. Uh, I've learned <laughs> so much and feel like I'm learning new things every day, but a couple things really have jumped out uh, reflecting on the past few years. Um, th the first thing is, is the importance of creating a support system for myself and recognizing the real challenge in building a business. And building a business doesn't need to be meaning a start, you know, doesn't need to be that you're a startup founder. It could mean that you are a salesperson. It could mean that you are building your client relationships. It can mean a lot of different things. But uh, for me, I've had to be really thoughtful around creating and asking for support from people in my orbit. Another big lesson that I've learned is really around um, the, my relationship with discomfort and my relationship with challenge. So I still have experiences where I feel like I'm avoiding something. I don't want to confront an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make that tough decision. And now when I get that feeling of wanting to avoid something, I've learned to just sit with it and lean into it and take an action that can help move me past it. Um, I think earlier on in my career, I would have those sensations and avoid them. And now I'm like, this is part of the adventure. Bring it on. And I try to just confront any challenges that might come at me. Because when you're an entrepreneur, if you don't do something, it's not going to get done. <laughs> right. You, know, there's no, there's, you don't have that inertia of, well, the ship's going to keep moving and someone else is going to pick up the oar for a while. You, you might fail to exist if you don't make that call, yeah. if you don't do that follow-up. And I think that has helped me certainly be more assertive about mm. what I've always said is important, which is you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. The minute you shy away from that, game, set, and match, someone else is going to get that opportunity. Yes. So I think so, that's been important. Sorry. Uh, let's dive a little deeper into that. Can you both share maybe some of the business challenges you've had and how you've overcome that? Certainly. Um, Medley was actually originally supposed to be an in-person community. We were supposed to launch in April of 2020. Uh, March of 2020, it was very clear that that launch was not happening as planned. Uh, and we had to totally rethink our business model, our member experience, uh, and even how we operated internally, like so many, like everyone else did. Uh, so that was really the first real major unexpected challenge that we faced, but ultimately, um, we were able to lean into that, and now we bring people together from all over the country, all over the world, which wouldn't have been as easy to do had we been focused on scaling uh, in real life. Another challenge we've just you know, been experiencing is obviously the, the broader macro environment is right. something that um, you know, we've had to, to really work through from a business point of view and, and make sure that we're still meeting people where they are, we're still meeting companies where they are, we're, we're you know, reflective of the broader capital markets and, and uh, adjusted accordingly. And I think that just, um, Edith and I have really relied on trust with one another to make sure that we're being as thoughtful and forward thinking as we plan towards the future. So having that shift because of COVID going more virtual mm -hmm. as opposed to in-person, you think that that's been a positive for Medley? Is that, or is that something that you eventually would like to go more in person down the line? I don't know. You know, it's really hard for us to think about COVID being positive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't mean I, it in that way. I know, but. I know, but I think about that actually because, you know, I, 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 I want to understand and we want to make sure that we're capturing the whys of the momentum that we have. Uh, and I think that. What has happened as a result of the extraordinary hardship and challenge of the last few years is that people have felt an urge to get real mm. and to get um, intentional about the relationships they've had. So I do think that that, first and foremost, has been an a, 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 a important sentiment right. um, for Medley. Right. I know in our industry, for example, a lot of advisors struggled with the virtual aspect of it before COVID saying, oh, my clients would never like that. They want to meet in person. Yeah. And I think a lot of times it was something that was more in the advisor's head mm -hmm. than what the clients wanted, especially in Los Angeles where it just takes you so long to get yeah. anywhere and we had clients all over. So when we did, we, we did do virtual meetings, but when we focused more on virtuals, clients really enjoyed it. It was very efficient. So that shift was great. And I think a lot of advisors now said, oh, 
my clients actually do like this. They yeah. do prefer it. So and, and of course, they probably are have a different state of mind having functioned for the last for two of the last three years without actually seeing anyone. Right. So I think a lot of things actually were forced upon us that all of a sudden we thought, oh, we could never go there, but we're there, and actually, in some ways, it's better. Mm. Now, I think we're probably swinging back a little bit. I mean, look at all the people who have taken the time to come to the festival, right? Why are people gathering again? Because it's important for people to gather. It's right. important for people to have the in-person interaction, but does that mean, therefore, that all the meetings are gonna go back to live meetings? I, I suspect not. So those of you who know me, um, I run an RIA, and I work with my family, wi my wife who's here. Hey, Rosa. Mm -hmm. she, she works with me and is the CCO of the firm, and we also have a community platform also called FutureVest, which I work with my family, and my oldest is right here. Hey, Jeremiah. <laughs> uh, so I bring that up because it's tough to work with family, and uh, let me rephrase that. It's tough for my family to probably work with me, <laughs> uh, right? There's a lot of yeah, nodding. Yeah, I, I see Rosa <laughs> nodding her head, there you go. No doubt, all right. So how has it been working as a family? Is there some struggles maybe you can share? I'll start with the first thing. She calls me Edith. <laughs> like, I, I like being mom. There's like a lot of positive things that go with being mom. I kind of like work for a few decades on that. I yeah. think I'm getting a little bit better at it, you know? And, and so I say that jokingly, but I do think that's a reflection of one of the challenges that we have, which is we need to make sure that we are making space to still be mother-daughter, to still be family. Because for much of my, and Jordan's life, for much of my workspace, you know, I lived in a different world where, you know, there was work and then everything else, including my family, you know, learned um, very well to kind of like fit in with the, oh, mom was going to be home for dinner, but she's not, and we get it because it's work. Right. And so I, didn't, I, I, I think we've worked really hard to make sure that we don't go down that path again, that we make sure that, you know, when, when we're on a Sunday evening, which is when I tend to get revved up and which is when I started to call my colleagues in the work construct, that, you know, if we're having a family dinner, I don't need to go there on Sunday night. And that's been a good discipline to stick to, for sure. Yeah, I, I struggle with it a little bit as well. Uh, Jeremiah, that does work with me, you know, he'll email me, hey, Dad, we need to take care of this or whatever. And then obviously when we're talking to others, he'll say, Alex, and, then, and <laughs> they'll throw me off. But I get it. It's a professional environment, so they want not just say, oh, my mom or my dad and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. uh, so Jordan, uh, tell us a little bit more about the communities, how that helps individuals grow their businesses. Uh, these are all pretty much many solo practitioners and business owners that are here. H how does a community build and how does it help? Because I know as we've built out FutureVest and what's going on, I think community is the future. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us that are here and know me and we all know each other through Fintwit, the financial Twitter community, which is a little bit more public, but how does a private community help? Absolutely, and I, I think um, just something to call out, I think in general communities can be so incredibly powerful. Uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of communities that you're a part of and, and we're in one community now and uh, my biggest uh, point of view around engaging in communities is really that you get what you put into that. And so uh, I think that's just something uh, I'd encourage you to take away. Look at the communities you're already a part of, think about what you're, what you're contributing to them and, and you'll probably gain even more. Um, as it relates specifically to Medley, though, um, we think about uh, supporting our members' growth in a few different ways. Uh, firstly is a space to get outside of your bubble and connect with others. And you're building your network in a really authentic way. So mm -hmm. if you imagine um, we get to know people, we match them into groups of six to eight. Uh, they fill out our matching questionnaire. We hop on the phone with them. Uh, and you'll be with eight other people who are in a similar place in their journey. Uh, but coming from a very different vantage point. Uh, so you might imagine, you know, there's someone who works at a tech company in Chicago uh, compared with a wealth advisor who is based in Florida. And, and that amalgamation of, of different perspectives mm -hmm. is really incredible to help people expand their own perspective. So having more like cohorts mm -hmm. and so forth, that's, that's mm -hmm. been helpful in that's, that regards? That's a really big piece of it. Um, another piece of it is really access to uh, coaching and okay. to... Um, 
the, the sort of process of the group itself. And so um, I don't know uh, how many people here have worked with coaches in different formats, um, but leadership and executive coaching is a really incredible tool that can help propel your growth in a concrete way. And they're incredibly expensive sometimes and difficult to access. But with Medley, our coaches are leading every single group session. And so um, we provide a good amount of structure to the community itself so that people can then uh, expand and, and grow. And, you know, we were just this past week, we're finalizing like the next cohort of members. And it's amazing to just, uh, for us to get to know great. these different people and to see them talk about, okay, this is where I am now and here's where I want to go. And how can Medley kind of help fill that gap? I'm curious, uh, from the crowd, how many of you either belong to a community similar to this or looking to build a community for your own practice and clients? If a show of hands, is this something that you have been considering? Yeah, I definitely think that it's the way forward. And as we see these public communities that we're all a part of, uh, people want to have that private community and be part of something a little bit closer and have the cohorts and kind of graduate together. And, and it's been really helpful. Uh, yeah. to, to see that build out. And I, and I, I, I'm not surprised, and I would encourage um, everyone who's building communities to really think about um, how they can be as clear uh, about, you know, setting some sort of commitment so that there is that cohort feel. Because yeah. imagine if, you know, we're here at Future Proof, uh, there was a structured way for you to engage with people that you've met over time. I think that that's where we see the future of communities going. And even with live conferences, like we've worked with a couple of big corporate partners on how we can create cohorts within that experience. Because when you're in a smaller group, you can get to a level of depth that can be a little bit harder uh, than otherwise. And holding each other accountable, right? Yes. Just like a trainer, a coach, yeah. yes. someone that's going to hold your hands and make sure you hit those marks. I, I don't know if you wanted to add yeah, I, there. Yeah, I do. You know, I think what... You do what you all do is hard, right? You are putting yourself out there to represent, you know, your firms, large or small, in some cases your, your, yourself, to really provide expertise and value, you know, in a very complicated setting. And in the current environment, and I think this has been building up on time, over time it's really, really complicated. I was talking to a founder of a fintech company last night, and he was saying, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's certainly so many exciting things out there, asset classes are doing this, we're doing that, but I'm also, I have to say, a bit surprised on how hard the people dynamic is right now. And it's really hard because we don't live a, in a world anymore where people have their work selves and their life selves. People want these things to be blended. Yeah. And blending all of that into one identity in the workplace from a leader's perspective is somewhat complicated. It's really hard. And how do you learn how to do that? How do you figure out that when you are, as an example, let's put it from the client context, you're going to meet with a client and they've got all this stuff coming at them. And you know, you're there to talk about you know, the next phase in your relationship or a new tool that you want to offer. And they want to do that, but really they want to talk about stuff that's on the top of their mind. Like, cause, cause, cause it's a people business, right? right? I mean, they're not like doing business with, they're doing it often because of you and what they believe you represent. How do you have those conversations? How do you listen in a different way? How do you project empathy and care? That's what we've heard from our Medley members. That's what's really exciting for us, that they are, because they're stepping out of their day-to-day -day comfort zone and spending intentional time with other people that they, might, they do not know, they get that opportunity to be coached by a coach, by each other. It's been really incredibly impactful for our members. Can you expand on that a little bit? Like, how could a financial community help with our clients and, you know, prospective clients possibly navigate through the crazy economic uh, times that we're in right now? Well, I mean, first of all, I'm really thrilled to be here because when I think about my medleys, financial services is like where I'm from, what I know. So I feel like I've returned to my medley first and foremost. Um, I would also say that, you know, one of the things that kept me in financial services for 35 years was that at the end of the day, there was an individual that made a decision, right? Individuals, many individuals, Massives of individuals that created moves in the marketplace that influenced actions that um, individuals would take. That's what financial services, in its purest sense, provides. 
you know, ideas and, and access to capital so that people can make decisions. And so, you know, when things are just going up, up, up and away, which they never do forever, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, the conversations and when the, 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 the global world isn't under stress like we've been in with the uncertainty, you know, the conversations are different. You know, the reports that you're going to give your clients, the, the, the tools that they're looking for, it's like, numbers look good, let's keep going. But, but that actually isn't the environment that we're in. It may be the environment that we're in next month, next year, but we don't know. And, and nothing is static. And so not only do you have to talk about what has been known, you have to be in a position to talk about like these asset classes that you know, you're here, you're trying to learn, you have to grow. How do you do that? You do that by really being part of these communities. Someone this morning said, oh, this is great. I went to the, the beach thing, et cetera, et cetera. It was a little loud, though. I didn't get, I need to figure out a way to have those meaningful conversations because I want to keep up with some of these people. Right. That's what's important for financial services. At the end of the day, for any business, but particularly for financial services, you got to be connecting in a different way than perhaps you did before. Technology will enable some of that, but some of that is going to come down to you and your teams and your organization and how they represent how they exist in humanity. I don't think I would have said that five years ago. Maybe I should have, but I don't think I would have. So Jordan, mom in company, I'm gonna call you mom, sorry. Thank Even you. Even if she doesn't Someone want to, will. I'm gonna call my, you mom. My two other children do, so I'll have that. <laughs> but Edith mentioned you know, what, what's happening here at Future Proof and we're all kind of learning from each other outside of our lanes, uh, learning about different tech providers and industries and products and so forth. What do you think about that here for the financial services? What are kind of some of your thoughts in working in that manner and building and fostering some of those human skills? Oh, I mean, I think as we continue to see the development of technology and, and the role of technology in our lives expand, uh, human skills are going to become more and more important. Um, and, you know, Edith mentioned and said it very, very well, I thought, around... Uh, you know, we're, you're in the business of people. Right. And understanding where they are, understanding where they're coming from is absolutely critical. Um, the, you know, in terms of how to concretely build those skills, mm -hmm. um, there's a few ways you can go about it. I think, obviously, there's companies and programs like Medley and there's coaching. Um, there's also ways that you can just activate the people in your own life to help build self-awareness. Uh, and so when I, you know, talk to people and they ask, okay, what's your one point of view or a piece of advice is I'm trying to figure things out and trying to expand and grow, um, create a, a group with people that you know. Commit to touching base once a month, talking about things that you're working on, creating a sense of accountability. Uh, just commit for three months and see what happens. And it can be a 30-minute phone yeah. call. Um, and just having that consistency and, and creating a little bit of space to actually uh, try things on, to practice different skills, to practice listening, um, can be really impactful. Great. Edith, could, do you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, I think what Jordan has just said is you have to be intentional about it, mm. right? You have to commit to thinking about how you um, represent your ideas and most importantly, how you are engaging with people who are, are not necessarily in your day-to-day -day lane. And you have to make time for it. I think Medley, to be frank, is an extraordinary platform um, because of what we offer our members. So you should check it out with medley.com, but you should check out other platforms as well. And other opportunities, Medley is more than a platform, it's in person, virtually, we like to call it. But you know, just when you leave here in the next two or three minutes, I would say, you know, when you, when you go to the, listen to the band later or whatever, and you're mm -hmm. with the same five people that you love to see at conferences, ask yourself the question, who's here that knows something that I don't know? And how do I make sure that I'm stepping out of my tribe that I always see and that I enjoy hanging with to learn something about their perspective on X? And you get to decide what X is. Mm. And, and whatever is comfortable for you. You might want to start X in a context of your business. You might want to start X in the context of the fact that, you know, you like someone's shirt. I mean, I don't know. But figure out how to be intentional in the connections that you're making with other human beings. Listen. Ask questions. Volunteer yourself in an authentic, honest way. 
That's what we're talking about. And, and Medley is a great platform to do that, but we all have those interactions mm -hmm. every single day. If you go to, into those with the, that kind of lens, I think you'll get more out and you'll contribute more, which quite frankly, to me, is as satisfying as what I get. Thank you. So we have about five more minutes left. Uh, I see some questions on Slido, which we'll go through real quickly. And if you have some questions for our panelists, please go to the app and type those in Slido. Uh, Jordan, before we get to the questions, maybe real quick, you can kind of give us some takeaways for the audience that they can apply in their own lives. Absolutely. Um, number one takeaway uh, I hope that you have from this conversation is that you can create a medley in your own life and you can create a group and be, just be thoughtful around your own support system. Um, I think that's just been one of the biggest insights for Edith and I uh, in our own journeys to date, is really leaning on our medleys and our communities and our lives. Um, the other piece that I hope you take away is a level of intentionality around your growth. Uh, it's been incredible for me to get to work with Edith for many reasons, to work with my mother for many reasons. <laughs> Um, right. She throws one, me something every now and then. <laughs> okay, go ahead. One of those reasons is, is I have seen her consistently embrace a growth mindset and try to put herself in situations to learn. Someone who had been at the top of a, a, a hugely large and successful organization and is now still on many corporate boards and gets to work on Medley, she's still trying to be uncomfortable. She's trying to intentionally grow. And that, I think, you know, when I talk to Edith about some people that she's worked with and different CEOs she's worked with, I think that is the number one common thread amongst those people is that they're constantly embracing opportunities to learn and treat that as a really core part of not just their job, but as their identity. And so I would, you know, obviously you're, you're here, you're participating in Future Proof. I'm sure you're soaking up a lot, but um, embrace any chance you get to learn and be really intentional about that growth. Fantastic. Uh, so let's go through a couple of these questions here. Uh, we see, how do you see leadership evolving with the move towards remote work? Uh, why don't I take that one? Sure. Um, I, I think it makes it more important and it makes leadership harder, right? Because, you know, part of the reason that organizations get stuck in the way that they work is because it becomes more predictable and therefore you can be, I wouldn't say lazy, but you know what to expect. Everyone shows up at the office. On Monday, you can schedule a meeting. If you're not on the road with clients, da, 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 you have to show up at the meeting. You know, you're there. The problem with that is that it's very limiting, right? Because you're putting up guardrails and boundaries that, that for a long time people is, are, have asked, like, but why? Why do I have to do that? Um, but from a leadership perspective, because we talk the talk about how you want people coming at things from different ways, but quite frankly, you don't really represent that because it's easier when everyone just does what everyone does. Now, in a remote work environment, or even more challenging, a hybrid one, you've got to make sure and you have to be intentional with being really inclusive and really capture everyone's excellence so you can keep moving the organization forward. Because if you don't, Everyone could be going off in their own direction, mm -hmm. and that is not great. You want it both of the best of both worlds. You want ideas, generation, people work where they want and how to work, but you need to make sure as a leader that you're like figuring out a way to bring it all together. That's why culture is important. That's why sort of rituals in terms of making sure that when you're doing Zoom calls that everyone is participating. That's how paying attention to who's in your conversations, are people calling you consistently and you haven't, all those things actually create that equality that's really important, but it's, it, it takes work. And I think that we need to prepare ourselves as business people and as leader to commit to that. All right, we got one minute left. So Jordan, I'm gonna let you take this last question. Uh, what is the number one thing preventing 25 to 35 year olds from seeking help with coaching and investing? I'm gonna say two things. One is awareness that it could be beneficial to them uh, and finding the right place to start. Uh, and two is having that acute need above their other priorities and, and other things. So oftentimes what we've seen, when people join Medley, they're in a transitional state of life. So maybe they're getting married, going through a life event, and that actually triggers a whole other series of... They're taking of, on more and broader leadership Exactly, so they're taking on more responsibilities. Um, and so I think those are just a couple of things that uh, 
come up as, as obstacles. Um, but just in closing, a huge thank you, Alex, because this has been a oh, wonderful my conversation. Pleasure. And I also saw another question. All of our coaches are certified um, by the ICF ACC level or higher, so we do have credentialization for our coaches. Um, and it's been such a pleasure being here. If you're interested in learning more about Medley, our website is withmedley.com, and our cohort. Uh, the last day to join is actually tomorrow, so yeah. very timely. Um, but in all seriousness, I hope you, you leave this with um, a, a, a renewed intention to commit to your growth and, and connect with others. Edith, Jordan, it's been an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.